Welcome back guys, we're here in Tari today with Jeff. We're heading out to EFK. I've never been out here in Tari with you guys. I've tried to make videos before and just never worked. But today it's actually working. It's just a 20 minute flight over to Yifki. We are just there uh, 40 minutes ago or so, and lots of clouds, we landed there. So we should be able to get back in, it should probably clear up a little bit more. But uh, yeah, interested to see how it is when we get back there in another 20 minutes. Alpha Tango Charlie, November Tango Echo. Do you mind if we taxi back uh, with expedite departure? Yeah, no problem, let's go ahead. Many thanks. All right, once this comes out of here, then we'll get going. For you. About to the north. Roger, copy that. Uh, we're and uh, we'll keep an eye out. Thanks. And we'll be going low probably out anyways. Probably no higher than 8,000. Copy. Thank you. All right, let's get going to the end of the chat. The You've got flight controls. Go for it. All right. Break off, please. All stations starting over Pango Echo. Taxiing for departure to the north. We'll be on climb about above 900,000. All stations starting. That was nice of him to let us get out of here before him just a little bit slower at taxiing and turning and getting it. So you can finish up everything else okay. you have sure. while I'm taxiing down here and then you can get out of here and to take off. So Jeff is um, one of our pilots that's just started a few months ago flying um, and he's just working on right now introductory slope slips up, sl slope strips up to 6% slope and five to 600 meters. So today we're at 7%, so I'll do the landing out of Yifki. But then he, all the other flights today, he'll be doing all the landings and takeoffs, so. Or is he 6538, November Tango, Echo, departure, or correction, taxi. Right, well, I'll get them on the air. All right, you have flight controls. Yep, you I got flight controls. around anywhere in here. And Well, the briefing is going to be the same as this morning, yep. and uh, we've I will check the performance. We've got one tooth, so the third um, touchdown marker would be a safe four point. Okay. Shed, inlet, lights. Four or five thousand. That's pretty much about the same as Goroka. Okay. So thirteen thirty. Oh, thirty. And sixty. All station Atari, November Tango Echo, rolling, runway 32 for an outbound track of 346. 1330 and 60. Okay, airspeed's alive. Just are green. Continue. It says we have two knots of headwind. The wind sucks. We has says we have four knots of tailwind. So it felt like tailwind it on takeoff. It did feel like a tailwind. Yep. Driver Dari, Nova Tango Echo, Alpha Tango Echo is entering back, uh, Charlie is entering in back tracking runway on four. We came in that valley over here. Yep, and I think that's a good valley to go back out. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Cheers. Morsby 6538, November Tango Echo, departure. November Tango Echo, gone. Morsby, November Tango Echo, departed Tari for Yifki 4 POB at time 57, tracking 346 on climb not above 900,000, estimating Yifki time 16. A primitive November Tango Echo. I'm going to go back out the same way we came, that way we can stay low. Oh my goodness, let me get rid of that. HF radio, it's horrible. It looks like there's still clouds there, but more than likely all we're seeing is a couple of the clouds that are just pushed up against the edge of the mountain. We came over right about way up there at the end of that little yellow gap up in there. I think because all we're seeing right now is the bottom of this layer, but I think as we go further, we'll, it'll build back up and those are just some lower ones right kind of tucked into the bottom of the valley. 
All right, so as you can see, we're just, we just departed um, Tari right here, and we're heading up to Yifki in that area. And like I said, it's only a 19 minute flight, but because the mountains go all the way up to like 10,000 feet or maybe even 11,000 in some of these areas, we're just gonna kind of come into low route. We're gonna head back over there. There's quite a few clouds on the other side of this ridge. As we get closer into Yifki, it'll start getting into more of a scattered instead of um, like a broken overcast. Actually, no, we're actually heading over here. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. We're actually heading over there, coming in that way. Pretty much as soon as we can get, start going back down, we'll, we'll, we'll have to start going back down. Yeah. And hopefully it's cleared up enough. I'll have you do the full pattern sure, coming sure. in there. And um, we'll just brief it again here in a second. So we get leveled off and our workload goes down. What our original plan was, why this video worked out where we were, I was not planning on doing a video on this flight today, but we had 25, all the way up to 28 knots of tailwind coming out of Garoka, and we were gonna land in Tari with too much fuel. We ended up having to drop our passenger off over at Yifki first, then jumping over to Tari so that we could actually get all of our cargo and people to head back to Yifki and then on to another three more stops, two more stops after that. So it worked out well. It's not costing us anything extra because the amount of fuel we saved was like 100 pounds of fuel. Oh, and that's basically what we use on one leg exactly from Tari over to Yifki. So it worked out well, thankfully, this time but it just created a little bit, maybe 25 extra minutes throughout the day. Right down there, you can kind of see there's like a little bit of a blue area down there. That's the route right down this valley over to Wanakipa. Okay. I had to do it just a couple of times. There's a lot of times you'll land there and they have people that want to come up here to Tari on your way back to Garoka. Okay. So if it works out and you're flying out there, Plan maybe if you if, if you have a little bit of extra fuel available, just plan to and do, I'll that. do that. There's usually somebody there. And I think I've even done it to where I've just said, okay, I'll do that, and then I'll stop at Mount Hogan on my way back for fuel. If it was like if that was my only flight of the day, and I didn't have to really worry about time, you know. Just kind of we just came in here. Pattern altitude is 4,200 feet. I'll turn that down to 42. And it's a grass runway. 7% slope, like I was saying earlier, there's, um, a, there was a decent amount of clouds in the in the circuit area, so it just kind of made a little bit of a revised turning final a little bit closer to the runway. And we'll turn final at 400 feet, and we'll just basically go from ridge to ridge to ridge as we kind of come in and just hug the trees as close as we can, depending on how the how the clouds are. I, th I, I think they'll be a little bit better. Okay, so 42, 36. And, uh, or sorry, 38, 36. But if for some reason that it's not, then I'll just do the circuit just because you're not as familiar with it. But if it's been cleared out, then we'll just have you do the circuit just because this was Jeff's very first time into Yifki earlier this morning and it wasn't a really great example of how to fly the circuit just because there was a lot of clouds and it was kind of revised. Once we land in Yifki today, we'll actually have to hand fuel the plane just because we're low on pilots right now because we've got some other pilots um, and kind of an introductory training course that they're not flying and our other main pilot's not flying. It's just Jeff and I flying for the past, like what, like two and a half two weeks, weeks now? Yeah, two weeks or so. It's been a lot busier for us, but it just uh, has changed our schedule around a little bit. So now we actually, because of, we can only do this big, huge rounder, we actually have to hand pump and fuel when we land here in the EFE, which is never fun, but it's kind of a necessity today. Also, because we are going back to Yifki, I wanted to update you guys in case you haven't seen some of the other videos. We did a fundraiser for the school out there, and just a huge thanks for everybody that was involved in that. Um, you guys raised up $14,000 for the school, so massive thanks for everybody that was involved in that. We just sent in the check for there, and um, was just speaking with the people that are in charge of that today, and they were saying that actually, rather than just kind of updating what school building they have, which is out of thatch, and like half of the roof was thatch, and half of it was tin roof, um, they're actually planning on building a full actual school building out there just for longevity of it, so that it's not some continually upkeep. So that's super exciting. Hopefully over the next year, I think is what they're hoping to do that. So if things start to progress with that, I will update you guys with some videos on how that's going and where your money's going towards. Wanna to start heading in that direction and then we can keep evaluating. Now the sooner we can get to that little lighter brown, 
better. That's when the valley's gonna open up with the clouds and then we can get down. So if we can get over to that quickly, I think we'll be good to go to get down. And if you just kind of draw a line out, it looks like over there where that little brown, or that, not the brown, but the blue hole is, yep. the clouds all go down. So we can just start descending towards that because yep. we know that's in the direction that we want. And you then by the time you. we get there, we can just adjust going, oh, there's more holes than we thought, or no, oh, there's not as many, but I think because the time has passed and it was open when we left, I don't think we'll have any issues getting back into Vertical the same valley. Track. More than likely, we'll come in this way and then around the end of the valley. And this valley and this valley, they look the same as we come up to them, so we want to make sure there's a river coming out of okay. our valley. If there's not, or is that one or that one? Okay. Yes, because this one looks very similar as you fly by it. And let's see, we've got one more ridge to go. Ridge or two more ridges. So we have to get over, I think, that one, one more. Okay, so I don't need just a shallow descent for now then. Whatever it takes to get where you want it okay. to. All stations, UFG, Kodiak, November Tango Echo is eight miles um, to the south. 7,400 on our descent, expecting circuit time. Uh, one form. Anticipating we can turn up the valley here. Yep. Then it'll won't be, there's kind of an entrance straight ahead of us and then there'll be the next one. I'm That's thinking right. that, that one right up there. So this valley here is the one I was telling you, it's like the false valley. Okay. But there's not the river coming out, and it, but it, it looks kind of like, ah, uh, okay, yeah, but we want to go up kind of right around that hole right there. I can kind of see the ridge and then it kind of go back up in the, the valley there. Do you got RV ref in? I do, yep, 70 knots. knots. Okay. Double check it, but we were at 65. So that's right. And I want to get it. Morsby 6538, November, Tango, Echo, in the circuit. Yifki, report after landing. November Tango Echo in the circuit. Yifki, report after landing. November Tango Echo. All stations, Yifki 1285, November Tango Echo will be joining into the circuit, Yifki. If there's just about as many as last time, then I'll just do the circuit. It's because it's hard to tell you the key positions when there when are there's clouds. there's clouds everywhere, yeah. <laughs> it looks like there's still going to be a lot, a lot of, of clouds in there. circuit. Hey, why don't I just take flight controls? You got it. I have flight controls, and then we'll go from there however it looks. Um, it's more open, sort of. We wanted 4200 flying over the head of the field. Typically we fly over top of that hill over there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's enough. Good. Okay, you have flight controls. Go all the way over there around this cloud and then we'll kind of cut off to the left so that we can fly right over top of the head, um, over top of the field. Okay. See all these pine trees over here? We want to be 4,200 feet or 4,100 feet scraping over top of those, okay. kind of in the middle of those. We'll turn final, I'll take over. Got it? Awesome. And we'll just want our 10 degrees, 10 degrees of flaps over there. Once we're over top of the trees, we'll do 20 degrees of flaps. Okay. Then just position yourself so that you can actually see down over the field so that it's not like wah, wah, all the way back and forth just to be able to see, you know? We want 70, 80, 90. 90 on basically kind of going over those hills area. Let me go get 10 degrees in now. All right. Uh, Winsaka is calm. Wind's up here. Maybe a knot of tailwind. Oh, see where there's a gap in between those two trees? Or the two groupings of the pine trees over there? I do, yep. Fly right through there. Right. That way you don't hit anything. Little and around 4,100 feet there. Right over here to the left this a little bit. Okay. Yep, right there, in between those two taller trees. And we don't need to go down super low where we're like, because some of them are hard to actually see, you sure. know? Yeah, so 40, looks like 4,200 gets us through here nice. Right. See a little cloud over there comes a little wispy down. Yep, I do. Just do 20 degrees. Head straight to that. 3,800 feet at that point. And 
It's going to be 80 knots. 90 knots. 90 knots here, turning at that point, and 80 knots on our base. Right where that cloud's dropped, that's the, where those kind of 1-1 one, one trees are. That's pretty much where you want to go, 3,800. This is probably good enough here to turn. We're a tad bit high, we want 3,600 by that second ridge over there. It's low into 80 knots. 500. Which ridge am I shooting for? It's the, the far ridge, basically. 3600. And then slow on down so that when you're turning final, you're right on where you want. So not the first one, kind of the second one. All right, going full flops, but all right. Right. Here's the river. Here's your go around. Okay. So, all right. Have flight controls. Yeah, flight controls. I have flight controls. Five hundred. So well, basically, we are committed now. Okay. I can see why. That did set us up well. Fast. That's crosswind. manageable speed, then immediately go low idle. Right. Then you can get going up again. I'll get started. one, I'll park in the parking bay. All right, well, my lay hand, the uh, right hand landings are feeling a little more comfortable. Okay. Like, when I did one a couple of weeks ago with Brent, it was just like, very awkward. It's starting to feel a little, little more comfortable. It's starting to feel a little there. more comfortable, but awesome. it's still not second nature. Well guys, if you're a flight sermon and you want to fly this same little route here that we followed along with, check out the link below to Patreon and you can do this same route. Um, and actually, one, um, somebody actually made this airstrip for Microsoft Flight Sim. Really great job too. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and try to pump in 61 liters in here with this. And uh, we're going to have the correct tools to open it up, but I think we'll find something that works. Right, the screwdriver here and maybe we can just hammer, hammer it around. Yeah, you got to Okay. You want to try it? Yeah. The screen went off. So this case is to check the water. I'll just stick it at the bottom of that. And it will turn blue if there is water in the tank. Do you need me to find a find a ladder? We can stand up with a tool drum. Okay. If I just uh Oh sixty one turns after it gets going. Three days later. So I can go get a ladder. Um, I can just jump on top. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you go.
There you go guys. Thankfully we don't have to do this very often. Maybe once a year, something like that. Anyways, we're jumping over the top of these to go pick up some doctors that we dropped off at Mariyama yesterday and heading back up to Compia. We won't do any filming on that, but thanks again guys. See you next time.